Nikocado Avocado defends himself after Stephanie Sue's video, and people aren't happy with his response. Please do not send any hate to Nikocado Avocado, Stephanie Sue, Zach Choi, or anyone else involved in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give some insight on the situation. Also, this is the first part on the situation. Stephanie Sue responds, and Veronica Wang gets involved in the second part of the series. Please wait until the end of the series before forming your opinion on what happened. On December 21st, Stephanie uploaded a video titled, Why I Am Scared of Nikocado Avocado. She said she felt like Nikocado Avocado was using his platform to her. I feel like I've been manipulated by fear that I can't say no to him. Stephanie said Nikocado still had unresolved business with the infamous mukbang drama in January 2019. Mukbang YouTuber Veronica Wang was highly disliked after unfairly targeting parody channel Shookbang. To summarize, Stephanie and Veronica used to be friends and filmed a mukbang video together. Shookbang created a parody video of their collab, making fun of how greedy Veronica appears over food. Veronica took the joke seriously and falsely copyright striked Shookbang's videos. Stephanie Su, on the other hand, thought Shookbang's video was funny. Shookbang reached out to Nikocado for help, and Nikocado put Veronica on blast for targeting Shookbang. For more details on the drama, you can watch our old video on the situation, which will be linked below. Stephanie said she spoke with Nick through DMs for the first time during the mukbang drama in 2019. Nick asked her to share her side of the story about Veronica. He wanted me to make a video on my side of the story. I had told him that I wasn't involved, I don't think I need to make a video, it was just back and forth of that. After the drama passed, Nick reached out to collab a couple times. Stephanie declined because the drama was too fresh. Instead, sometime later, Stephanie set up a group dinner off-camera with Nick and Zach Choi. Stephanie admitted to talking about Veronica during the dinner. Obviously, the conversation did lead to Shukbang and Veronica. But overall, Stephanie left the dinner feeling positive about Nick. He even opened up to me first, which made me feel really good. I felt like, oh wow, he trusts me. I left with a very warm feeling of just, hey. <laughs> He's nice. We started continuing our friendship through text. Stephanie said she was comfortable enough to share a personal experience with Nick. I ended up opening up. I was in my own home. It was somebody that I had to let into my home. It's kind of just shattered any sort of security. Any sort of security that I felt at home prior. <laughs> Eventually, Stephanie decided to do a YouTube group collab with Nick and Zach Choi this past December. The trio planned a three-day collab so they could each have a video to upload on their YouTube channels. The first video for Stephanie's channel went well, but the second video for Nick's channel made Stephanie uncomfortable. The trio were discussing what to talk about during the mukbang. Nick brought up a topic Stephanie suggested the day before. Nick said it very assertively, we're gonna talk about Veronica and we're gonna spill all the tea. However, Stephanie explained there was a misunderstanding. And so I was immediately like, no, no. <laughs> and then he, he went, but why'd you tell me yesterday that you wanted to then? I said, oh no, like I don't mind addressing Shukbang, but that's it. And he just got silent. And I couldn't have but feel like he was really upset by that. Then the trio filmed a noodle mukbang. Nick brought up Shukbang, but Stephanie decided not to speak about it. The way he went about it was just so, almost like an interrogation. I kept trying to show him I'm uncomfortable. I kept trying to lighten the mood with jokes. I had these baby wipes in front of me, and I kept wiping him every time he got too serious to just kind of play it off. Nick didn't take the hint and suddenly overstepped their agreement by bringing up Veronica. It increasingly went from Shukbang, maybe the first two sentences, into Veronica. Even though Stephanie tried to steer away from the conversation, Nick still persisted. He started twisting my words, and he started saying things like, if only you guys knew what she told me. Nick implied Veronica did something horrible to Stephanie. He said, she is such a strong woman to me, as if I had endured something so horrendous by Veronica. And I, I almost was like, Shoot, do I say like, oh, whoa, it's not that serious. Like all I did was go pick up hair dye with her, you know? But then like, I don't want to disclose all of this. Stephanie decided to speak about the Veronica hair dye story for the first time. I was driving around town, like we were picking up 
hair dye she canceled on a video because she wanted to dye her hair again. That was annoying. And I'm sure she has things that she finds so annoying about me. Stephanie said the story about Veronica had nothing to do with Shukbang. But none of them had to do with Shukbang. None of them would clarify anything about Shukbang. It was just me and Veronica have weird personalities that maybe didn't match perfectly. Back to the mukbang filming. Stephanie said Nick continued to bring up Veronica. I had told him about how Veronica, she likes to watch her audio, right? And I just remember telling him, like, I was a little bit more cautious during her collapse on her channel because I was watching the audio peaks because I have a very high-pitched, loud voice. And he, he insinuated that, remember what you told me? This thing that she made you do where she put this, ugh, disgusting as if it was something so horrendous that Veronica did to me. Stephanie implied she felt manipulated. And at that moment, I freaked out and again, I wanted to defend myself by sharing my story, which is I think what he wanted. But I just remember saying, oh my God, you make it sound like I was it felt like he was putting words into my mouth. The mukbang collab was uncomfortable for Stephanie. He didn't care how I felt. It, it went on for 30 minutes and it just felt so personal. Stephanie also brought up how uncomfortable she was filming the third mukbang for Zach's channel. She implied Nick was trying to get her to talk about Veronica again. At the end of the ASMR, because it was a whispering one, Nick turned to me and he said, is there anything else you'd like to say? And I just remember feeling so gutted. Like my heart had dropped to the ground because I thought it was going to be another interrogation. After the two collabs were filmed, Stephanie questioned herself. Half of me being like, why did you do that, Stephanie? That was your fault for misleading him. And then the other part of me was like, it doesn't matter. You were still uncomfortable in the video, and he did not care. That night, Stephanie had a breakdown. She shared security footage of the situation, showing her fiancé comforting her. Stephanie compared her fear of Nick to the fear she had when she was... I just can't explain this fear. That night, I was really pushed into a really, really, really dark place that I never thought I would be in again. After everything that's happened in the past, I told myself I would never, ever, ever feel like that again. However, she insinuated this breakdown about Nick was worse than her breakdown after she was... I had a breakdown, and it was unlike any other breakdown I had. Out of fear of Nick, Stephanie had trouble sleeping. It had been a really long night and I went to sleep at around 7 a.m. I was in and out of sleep until around 2 p.m. She ignored text messages from both Nick and Zach. Later, Stephanie called Zach at 2.20 p.m. Then, at 3.29 p.m., she sent a group message to Zach and Nick. She explained she wasn't able to film the last collab for Zach's channel. She told them she had trouble sleeping and was feeling sick. She also said she had to finish up some sponsored videos before the end of the year. Nick texted her, You just now realized? Stephanie, I have been sitting here for five hours. When you were going in and out of sleep, you should have picked up the phone and given me a call, not leave me hanging. You didn't like it when Veronica did that to you. So I'm sorry, I do not understand. Stephanie pointed out Nick's text message was passive aggressive, a sign of an emotional manipulator. Stephanie apologized for the miscommunication and explained she was okay talking about Shukbang, but not Veronica. Nick didn't accept her explanation and said, Then why did you tell me at your house that you wanted to address it on my channel? Stephanie gave the same explanation. Then Nick shared another passive-aggressive text. You already talked to Zach this morning, but ignored me for five hours after that. Don't play games. Stephanie apologized for messing up his schedule. Despite the tense mood, Nick asked to reschedule. Stephanie said she had to get back to Nick about a day. Nick sent another passive-aggressive text. Literally at any point in this conversation, you could have resumed with our videos planned for tonight. Please talk to me. Please give me a call. I feel like we need to chat. You only message things to the group chat, but not to me here. This is going to be my last time reaching out for the evening. I'm feeling hurt. Please talk to me, not through Zach. Stephanie said this text message was showing more signs of a manipulative person. She implied he doesn't care about what other people feel and only cares about what he wants. She said he was invading her personal space with no concern about her. Stephanie did not respond. She said she received eight missed calls from Nick. Stephanie decided to keep tabs on Nick and checked his social media. She found out that Nick was talking about her online. During their text conversation, Nick wrote on Instagram, I'm this effing close to making an exposing video. Should I? What the F is wrong with people? 
So rude, self-serving, and inconsiderate. Making some tea, you guys. You won't believe the audacity people have, but I have lots of receipts and audio clips. Stephanie clarified that she never consented to any audio clips other than for YouTube collabs. So, if Nick had any private audio of Stephanie, it would have been illegally recorded. This alarmed Stephanie, so she checked her security footage. And I went through all of Saturday when he was at my house. He was here for about five-ish hours. I used the restroom once. The one time that I did, without letting me know what he was doing, he took multiple pictures inside my house. And then immediately he started looking around at the ceiling. I didn't have any cool light fixtures up there. I just don't know what else would be up there other than security cameras. Then, Stephanie looked up videos about Nick, scaring herself even more. She found a video of Nick from his recent trip to New York City. Stephanie said a recent video of Nick showed signs of behavior. She said she couldn't ignore this and shared some clips. And they eat all your food and they leave and you're like, I wasted my time and I scrubbed my <laughs> for this experience. As I was nice enough to say, I'll eat whatever the you want to eat because I'm going to get sucked. You know, like, okay, I'm going to bend over because, I, you know, like, I'm going to give you what you want or I'm going to get what I want and nothing happened. Well, no wonder, dude. You're a this was supposed to enhance my trip, not make it more frustrating. But you have to understand where I'm coming from too. I'm clearly signaling to you, I am ready. I'm not going to just grab it because you will come back and it's gonna be the little Me Too movement. This behavior changed Stephanie's opinion about Nick. There is no part of this video that I can stand by and say that I support Nick as a person, as someone who has a platform. Stephanie also talked about the importance of the Me Too experience, explaining that it gave back her strength and voice. That was over two years ago. That and YouTube, I can really say. Feeling like I had a voice and feeling like I could say something and someone would listen to me, honestly saving me. And you want to discredit all of that because you had a bad date. I think that's disgusting but reckless for your audience. I think that's an incredibly reckless way to use your platform. Stephanie said she became even more fearful of Nick after seeing how he reacts to failed collabs in the past. You made me feel manipulated and fearful of what you would do. You made me scared of your anger. She shared this video. You certainly wasted my time too if you're saying you should have gone home earlier, meaning you didn't really value the time spent. He wasn't having a good time. Wasted my time, mother... Bye. Stephanie said a lot more happened after their collab. She experienced cyber <laughs> Stephanie shared various clips of Nick joking about her sleeping troubles. One of the inside joke from that story was in and out of sleep. And you don't understand, but then I told a few other YouTubers, I tagged them on Instagram, um, as well as my friends, and I, they all know, I was like, they know the story. A major thing that they take away from that was the in and out of sleep. I've just been in and out of sleep, and I don't know what's going on, but you know, I got things to do. I just got, ah, I got things to do. You've been, have you been in and out of sleep? Oh, in and out of sleep, oh my gosh. In and out of sleep right now. <laughs> we turned something that really bothered me into something that we could laugh about. When we were at the club, I'm telling you, I should have put this on YouTube, on YouTube. But also, I mean, it's just you have to laugh about things to get over things. That's just how what I believe. So it was all like 12 of us. We're all sitting together and we're like, in and out of sleep. 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 And then the people around us, in and out of sleep. And I, me and Honey started bawling with tears running down. We're like, in and out, in and out, in and out. Oh my God, it was so funny. Stephanie shared security footage to prove she was really having trouble sleeping due to stress Nick put her in. Stephanie announced she would be releasing In and Out of Sleep merch and give all proceeds to organizations that help stop cyber <laughs> Stephanie ended the video by explaining she's allowed to change her mind. I just want to apologize that I had the audacity to say no to you because I felt unsafe. I'm sorry that I had the audacity to open my doors and let you into my home and then you took advantage of that. And I'm sorry that I had the audacity to make you feel like I changed my mind. But I think it's really important that we all know that a yes is not all inclusive. Just because you say yes doesn't mean you're saying yes to everything for the rest of forever. That's incredibly predatory and manipulative. And lastly, she questioned Nick's motives. What was the purpose of all of this? To hurt Veronica? 
to get your sucked? On December 30th, Nick responded publicly on YouTube. Nick said Stephanie was lying about feeling unsafe in her home. Nick had several reasons, the first one being, She gave me a whole house tour. Nick added that he had his phone out to FaceTime his husband, Orlin. Nick implied that Stephanie acknowledged he was FaceTiming and continued to give the house tour. And during that FaceTime, she proceeded to show off her refrigerator, microwave counter, the stove, the lights. She showed Orlin the sofa. Here's a screenshot of Orlin watching us do the house tour. Look, I'm literally pointing toward the couch. The next reason was Stephanie saw him taking photos in her house. She was sitting right there as I took a photo watching me. Nick said Stephanie was not in the bathroom when he took the photos. It is so ethically wrong to insinuate that I was taking photos while you were in the bathroom. That is deliberate manipulation in order to sell a story. Nick implied Stephanie's photo story was too weak, so she used her traumatic experience to manipulate the audience. And you knew that probably wasn't enough to emotionally sway everybody, which is why you made half of your video discussing PTSD, the Me Too movement, all of which have nothing to do with our collaboration. Nick gave another reason why he thought Stephanie was lying about her fear. This is a multi-million dollar home, and I think you were happy to show it off to me. That shouldn't be used as material as to why you felt f***ed by me. Nick said the photos he took were innocent. I even took a selfie, look at me, and I sent it to my husband. This is innocent stuff. Nick clarified that he was interested in Stephanie's security system because he wanted one as well. To prove this, he shared an audio clip he sent to his husband, Orlin. A lot of these YouTubers, they have security systems that talk to them. It's an intercom sound speaker, like throughout every room in the house. And the lady will go, someone's at the front door. Or someone opened the second story window. And she talks to you and stuff. I really want that, that's really nice. Nick said Stephanie was lying about not wanting to talk about Veronica for several reasons. Reason one, Stephanie allegedly said they were going to discuss Veronica in a mukbang collab. She told me in my apartment, she told me in the car, she told me out of her house that we were going to discuss Veronica on my channel. Reason two, Stephanie wanted to do a docu-series, Shane Dawson style, with Veronica about the mukbang drama. Because of this, Nick made the assumption that Stephanie has unresolved feelings with Veronica. This lady has so much upset feelings against Veronica Wang. And let me tell you, it's a lot more than just pink hair dye. You think people make documentaries over hair dye? Reason three, Nick said Stephanie has willingly talked about Veronica in the past. Can I tell you when I first met Stephanie Sue out for dinner? It was Stephanie Sue going on and on about all of this stuff between her and Veronica. I didn't even ask her. Also on the topic of Veronica Wang, Nick said if Stephanie was uncomfortable, she could have asked him to change the subject. But my regular audience, they know that I go like this. You go like this, I'll take it out. I told her the minute she was in my kitchen. Nick claimed Stephanie is calculating and wanted to do the documentary for views. To back up this claim, Nick shared private messages from Zach. When Stephanie realized it would take months to film anything meaningful, I think she's trying to capitalize on it. That's why I told her that I'm not even involved. I wonder who her actual friends are, lol. Zach was never involved in the Veronica Wang drama. So, Nick and Zach thought Stephanie was using him for views. A documentary, and stick Zach in there too for clicks. Capitalizing on something, an opportunistic. Nick brought up an old collab to make his point. A mukbang YouTuber named Kimi was in town, so Stephanie suggested a group collab with Kimi, Nick Kyuni, and herself. Nick claimed Stephanie was using other mukbang YouTubers to get views. Doesn't take the time to get to know Kimi or me or Honey. Honey Eats doesn't like her. Kimi doesn't like her. I didn't really like her. I didn't even know her. You know, ignores us, stands us up, only reaches out to us if she wants something out of us. Nick also pointed out it was strange that Stephanie turned down his collabs multiple times, but when Zach was involved, she agreed. Nick suggested she was collaborating for views. I get double her views that she could be on Zach's channel in our collab because she knows when me and Zach last collaborate, it got a million something views. She wanted to be part of that so that people could go to her page too. It's just rude. 
though Nick accused Stephanie of capitalizing, later he backtracked and said YouTube is a business. YouTube is a business. You don't have to be best friends and cuddly with people to eat together, to film together. It is a business. We share subscribers. It brings something new to the channel. It's not that big of a deal. Then Nick implied collabs don't always have to rely on friendships. You're able to do things for business reasons and friendship reasons. Nick questioned Stephanie's fear of him, how she's afraid of saying no to him. She said no to me lots of different times. She said no to me over dinner and said she doesn't want any drama on her channel. And I had also asked a year before that, saying, hey, I'll come to Los Angeles, let's collab. She said no. However, the situations Nick mentioned were prior to the mukbang collab, meaning she wasn't scared of Nick before. Nick also addressed Stephanie's claim that she was fearful during their second collab. Stephanie said she wiped Nick's mouth to get him to change the topic. Nick felt it was playful. To me, that's pretty damn playful. I mean, you're so scared of me that your first instinct is to touch me? Nick brought up another situation where Stephanie didn't seem fearful of him. During the third collab, Nick was supposed to do a collab with Zach Choi. According to Nick, Stephanie invited herself into their collab. Stephanie Sue invites herself into my collab with Zach. That was not for her. It wasn't for her to be there. According to Nick, Stephanie and Zach were picking up food. Then, Stephanie FaceTimed Nick while hanging out with Zach to invite herself into their collab. Nick sent a message to a friend, Carly Steele, complaining about Stephanie's behavior. Stephanie Sue just like invited herself into it, but just very like, I'm self-serving. Nick decided to share Carly's private audio messages about Stephanie. That's so rude. And it seems like, yeah, like she's just really selfish. I think she knew what she was doing. She seems very manipulative. Nick also shared another situation where Stephanie didn't seem fearful of him. He said Stephanie taunted him in her exposed video. If you look at the tags, look at the tags under her accusation video. It says, hi Nick, I know you're seeing this. Who taunts with their, uh, who taunts with Nick implied that Stephanie was being calculating, keeping tabs on him. She's been watching my stories too. Why are you keeping tabs on what I do next? She liked my Instagram photo saying I was exposing someone and she knows it was about herself because Zach told her. And by the way, that's the first and only Instagram post of mine that Stephanie Sue has ever liked. Nick claims Stephanie manipulated her audience through subliminal messages. According to Dictionary.com, a subliminal message is a technique used in marketing and other media to influence people without their being aware of what the messenger is doing. This may involve the use of split-second flashes of text, hidden images, or subtle cues that affect the audience at a level below conscious awareness. Nick said Stephanie was sending a subliminal message in the thumbnail of her first video back after the drama. Her first video back was in an out burger. Something Stephanie did tell me when I first met her. And she rarely uses their logos because it's subliminal marketing and that comes at a high pri price. Nick implied that Stephanie chose in and out Burger because it would remind people of the in and out drama with Nick. Nick also addressed Stephanie's manipulative opening, where she pieced together short clips. Nick pointed out that these clips were used out of context to portray Nick in a certain way. They see a clip of me taken out of context of me saying to her, Can you trust me now? I do. Yeah, you do? Yeah, I do. Good. There's another clip of me making comments about the Me Too movement out of context. Well, Me Too movement. And then there's another clip of you saying to the camera, Me Too. Hashtag Me Too. And then there's another clip, a surveillance footage clip, an identified man over top of you, touching you as you scream and cry out, Whoa, gee. Was that by accident? Or was that to get an audience hooked to find out what I did to her regarding the Me Too movement? The way I'm portrayed in this video is calculating, sneaky, manipulative, coming to get you. Nick said Stephanie should not have brought up her incident. I'm sorry, but there was no reason to bring up into a discussion about ghosting me for a business meeting. Nick pointed out that Stephanie linked multiple links in her video description that may have sent the wrong message to viewers. You scroll down to the description box and you read, here are some links to help you understand what he did to me. One link is about emotional manipulation and the other link is to a story time video that I made about the Me Too movement. Nick said the description wasn't clear and could lead people to think that Nick her. Nick clarified, The Me Too movement is not what I did to you, Stephanie Sue. Nick also denied manipulating Stephanie. Emotional manipulation is not what I did to you.
Even though Stephanie never claimed Nick was a pr many viewers left her video feeling like he was. Nick addressed these concerns. I am not a pr I didn't Stephanie Sue. I did not or intimately intimidate Stephanie Sue. Half of the video was about a crime that I didn't even commit. Nick said Stephanie's out of context edits have people making serious accusations about him. Nick brought up the security clip as an example. There's people who don't even know me who are saying that that was me on top of her. Nick said people are responding with more accusations. And what are people saying about me right now? That I Stephanie Sue, that I have tendencies. There are people who are commenting all over my videos with I I followed, I stalked, taking photos of someone's home so I them. And there's people who are saying I belong in jail. There's people saying that the police need to be contacted. Nick implied things could have been solved with communication. Because you couldn't have a conversation? Because you didn't want to talk about some girl that you told me you wanted to? It's defaming who I am as a person. Nick pointed out that Stephanie's video could permanently damage his reputation. It's one thing to say, oh, someone's stupid. It's another thing when you pull in the Me Too movement, when you pull in trauma, when you start listing off definitions for master manipulators and tendencies, as she said, and this is going to follow me for life, for life, for life. I can't make all 6 million people who watched her video come watch mine. I'm going to lose money. I'm going to lose business. I'm going to lose support. I'm going to lose trust. Nick said he doesn't question Stephanie's experience. I can't imagine what it's like, but I am sorry that that happened to her. I'm not trying to blame the victim. I am not questioning what happened to her. However, Nick said her experience is not related to him. I am so sorry that whatever happened to you happened to you. I, again, I don't know, but that's not my fault. And Nick said it's unfair to expect him to understand what Stephanie really meant by her text messages. If you hear a message like that after getting stood up for an entire day, does the first thing come to your mind say, oh, she was in and out of sleep because she's having PTSD about a and a trauma. I had no idea of knowing that. I am now gonna have to live with people calling me a for God knows how long. Nick pointed out that Stephanie also made an unfair connection regarding her breakdown and fear of Nick. Coming from someone who sat on camera and said that what I did to her was quote unquote the worst experience she's ever had. That was worse than the actual person who her, by the way she phrased it. Although Nick did not bring it up, there is a mukbang video where Stephanie talks about how horrible she felt after being in 2016. When I was going through the I was so scared because I thought that this man, this monster, was going to kill me. But then afterwards, after the experience, it got worse because I was scared of myself, you know? I thought that I was going to myself and I was and that's a very scary thing to be scared of yourself to be scared of what you might do to yourself is a very very scary thing Stephanie brought up Nick Okado's New York trip video where he complains about not being able to hook up with a guy he met up with at the end of Stephanie's exposed video she said what was the purpose of all of this to get your suck this angered Nick I'm sorry that has nothing to do with you. Stephanie also shared clips of Nick dismissing the Me Too movement because of the failed hookup. I'm not going to just grab it because you will come back and it's gonna be the little Me Too movement. Nick said this clip was taken out of context. She chopped and chipped out of context was actually me saying the opposite of what she was trying to portray me as saying. I was saying in context that I didn't make a move because I'm not a mind reader and he didn't make a move. And it was a video to show how often this happens in modern day dating where you don't know who makes the first move but now you have to be extra careful. That doesn't make me a That makes me mindful. It was it a bad joke? Sure, it was a bad joke. Nick claimed Stephanie was using the clip for malicious reasons. She was so deliberate to take it out of context because it was a good nugget. It was a good sound bite to persuade the audience. 
Nick said Stephanie used a clip of him whispering out of context. She chops out the context and she uses it to say I was pressuring her or making her feel uncomfortable like I want to bring up Veronica again. Nick explained he was not interrogating Stephanie, he was just trying to wrap up the video. I obviously was giving her a chance to say goodbye. Nick explained he was whispering because it was an ASMR video. He accused Stephanie of using this clip to manipulate her audience. She was trying to emotionally sway her viewers and to say and I had tendencies, and of course it looks creepy because we're whispering. Out of context, it looks even creepier. Nick also pointed out that he stopped talking about Veronica after the second collab. The Veronica video happened five hours previously. That was the noodle video at my apartment. Five hours had gone by. Veronica was over and done with. We didn't even mention her. And if you go on Nick Okato's third channel, you'll find bloopers from their third collab. You can see Stephanie is smiling and laughing. It's unclear whether she's covering up her fear or not. Nick said Stephanie made him look creepy in their third collab. According to Nick, Stephanie suggested glaring at each other as she eats the last chicken leg. However, Stephanie didn't glare back at Nick. Nick said people are now taking the video out of context. People are taking that clip now and saying, ah, here's proof of Nick looking at Stephanie all creepily. Nick explained he wasn't being creepy. It was simply a comedic skit. He said he did this skit with Trisha Paytas before. Literally following what me and Trisha had done, where we sat there with our noodles and we looked at each other and we glared. We're literally trying to be funny. We're trying to get a reaction out of the viewers. Throughout the video, Nick revealed his true feelings about Stephanie. He revealed he disliked Stephanie when she suggested a group collab. I didn't really like her. I didn't even know her. Nick also spoke about his first impression of Stephanie. I'm telling you, my first impression of Stephanie was very self-serving. Nick said he didn't trust the reasons why Stephanie canceled on him, so he pressured her to get a sincere answer. Okay, well, let's reschedule. I said that because I knew she wouldn't want to reschedule, so I was kind of, I was literally playing with her. I'm like, I know she's not going to say she's going to reschedule. This is her way of getting out of it without giving like a sincere answer. Nick addressed the assumption Stephanie made about him illegally recording her talking. I didn't record her ever. I have never recorded anyone ever without their consent. I took a photo with her consent, but that's it. My audio clips were referring to my messages with Carly Steele and Orlin. Nick said it's odd that Stephanie turned a traumatic experience into merch. All of a sudden, the exact phrase, in and out of sleep, that phrase was so difficult to see and hear and imagine other people saying, well, now she's suddenly okay with it because it's making her money. Why not just ask people to donate directly? Nick accused Stephanie of trying to get traffic on her merch site. She knows that she's getting tens of thousands of people going to her merchandise page, that this influx of traffic, that she put a sale on every single one of her items. She's never had a sale there before, as far as I know. But why now? She knows everyone's going to her pay. Nick implied it was strange how quickly Stephanie pushed out in and out merch. 70 hours later, she had a merch line, a company, an artist, she produced it. Nick also pointed out that Stephanie was promoting her merch in the Exposed video. She wore her merchandise shirt in her accusation video. Who the heck promotes their t-shirts in a video like that? And she linked it. Nick said Stephanie made fun of his speech and distorted his image. She also essentially poked fun at me too. And this is coming from someone who's claiming to like not want to take part in It's like, why would you even edit that in there? That, that has nothing to do with anything. Nick pointed out that Stephanie didn't ask her viewers to stop the cycle. Neither one of her videos did she sit there and say, hey guys, make sure you don't either. You know, don't perpetuate a cycle. Nick said his friends were getting targeted as well, specifically Hyuni. Nick addressed the in and out jokes he made with friends. He told Hyuni and other friends about how he got stood up by Stephanie. He showed them Stephanie's response and they thought it was an excuse. We thought that was a backhanded response and we laughed it off. We made a joke in and out of sleep. To me, it's like, oh, you're being lazy or you're oversleeping or it's just an excuse. Nick said he didn't know the context behind her having trouble sleeping. In and out of sleep is not a mean thing to say. I did not know that she was having PTSD. I did not know that she was traumatized. I did not know that she was seeing me as a like 
no communication about that whatsoever. Nick said he was simply upset about being stood up by a possible excuse. He said joking about the matter made him feel better. When I made the in and out of sleep joke, that was my way of feeling better. Nick brought up the in and out post he made on Instagram. And I also tagged people who were my friends who did not know. The people who did not know, B Loves Life, Chelsea Lynn, Trisha Paytas, and Eric the Electric. Nick apologized to these people. I owe a big apology publicly to the people I tagged, who had no idea what that was about. I honestly did it because I wanted to feel better. Nick said he shouldn't have made the jokes public. It was stupid. I could have just done that privately with me, Honey, and Tian, and Tani's friend, just sitting there drinking and saying, in and out of sleep. So I am sorry for that. Nick said mukbangs are difficult to organize because you have to skip eating for hours or days to feel hungry for a mukbang. Nick said because Stephanie stood him up, he missed a meal and went 18 hours without eating. He explained this made his mood worse. So I was just waiting, and that's why I was extra hangry on an appointment that depended you to be hungry for. Like it just, I feel like most people would have been really pissed. Nick said getting ignored hurts him due to deep-rooted issues. I hate the feeling of rejection. I hate the feeling of being ignored. And it stems from my attach attachment disorder. When I was adopted, I developed attachment disorder. When you're born, you bond with your mother. I was left in a hospital for over a year, and I was passed from caretaker to caretaker, and I never got an emotional bond. Nick said when Stephanie stood him up, he needed to know why because of his attachment disorder. I was like, no, I need to know why. What did I do? I need to be liked. I need to be accepted. So that is where some of that played into as well. I don't like being ghosted, and I take it a lot harder than other people. Nick explained his reasoning for sharing this information. I'm not saying this for a pity party, trust me, probably will never mention it again. But I feel like I do need to explain myself. Nick said he would work on his attachment issues. That's something I need to learn how to control better, and I honestly feel like I need medicine for that. I used to be on lots of different medicine. Nick said he feels justified in how he reacted to Stephanie ignoring him. However, Nick backtracks from his attachment disorder statement and says any normal person would have reacted the way he did. I feel 100% justified in that reaction. I think most people would have reacted that way if they were left hanging for seven hours. Nick apologized for the Veronica situation. I'm sorry for the way I reacted when she said, oh no, I must have been a little uncomfortable. I didn't want to talk about Veronica. Nick apologized for reminding Stephanie of a traumatic experience. I'm very, very, very sorry for making her feel like getting flashbacks to when someone convinced her not to say no. I'm sorry, I had no idea. I had no way of knowing she didn't tell me. Nick apologized again to his friends he got involved with the in and out joke. I am so sorry to my friends that I tagged in the in and out of sleep joke. I'm sorry, I literally wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. Nick apologized for messaging Stephanie so much when she was uncomfortable. I shouldn't have messaged and called that many times, but I wanted to feel a little bit better. Nick asked the public to stop calling him things he's not. Please stop, 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 for the love of God, stop calling me a stop calling me manipulative, stop calling me a Nick ended the video saying Stephanie purposely portrayed him in a negative light. You can't say she had no idea that would be taken out that way. You just look at how it was edited. Look at the beginning, look at everything. The whole the descri the description, everything. It was so deliberate. And um, that's my truth. That's my side of things. So I'll see you when I'm ready to talk again. Bye-bye. On December 31st, Zach Choi responded to the drama on Twitter. Zach addressed Stephanie's docuseries, the private DMs, and his opinion on Nick's behavior. My explanation for the text. To be honest, I was taken aback when I was invited to be part of the docuseries. At that point in time, my friendship with Stephanie had not matured, and her request did hurt me a little because, at the time, I thought she wanted to use us for business reasons. Out of my own frustration, as well as simply validating a friend's, Nick's, feelings, I said, I wonder who her actual friends are. This wasn't meant to imply that she has no friends for the sake of being cruel, but questioning my newly maturing friendship with her. At the end of the day, my words were 
are hurtful and do not represent how I feel today. I have apologized to and supported Stephanie privately, but because my words were taken without my permission to publicly hurt and humiliate someone, I felt that I had to make a statement. Permission. A lot of people have been reaching out to see if I gave Nick permission to use screenshots of our private conversation in his video. Absolutely not. My take on what happened. Nick never liked Stephanie from the beginning. This was obvious and stated in his response. In my opinion, Nick had already decided on two ways the collab would work. With that in mind, none of Stephanie's responses were going to satisfy Nick because I don't think she wanted to spill the tea in this setting. As soon as the camera cut on our three-way collab, I immediately asked Nick why he was trying to expose Stephanie and that the tea channels would certainly be uploading titles like Nick Okado making Stephanie Sue uncomfortable for five minutes straight. So the cancellation came as no surprise to me. By the time Nick asked Stephanie for a reschedule in the group chat, 4.57pm PST, he had already texted me privately that he was going to expose her at 4.30pm PST. This leads me to believe even further that his main priority was simply to expose her all along. A video with all our texts from the day the collabs were cancelled have been posted. As you will see, Nick becomes increasingly aggressive as I didn't want to join him on condemning Stephanie in private. These texts demonstrate how difficult it is to voice an opposing opinion to his. Whenever I would disagree with him, I'd always have a looming fear he would get mad and use it against me. In my opinion, these are the only relevant private text messages which should be shared, as they are actually about the event in question and not from three months ago. Zach posted his text messages with Nick on his Instagram story. In the text messages, you can see Zach constantly asked to be kept out of the drama. OMG, keep me out of it, please. If you make a video, don't involve me in it, lol. But I'm not in the middle of it. Nick insisted Zach was a part of the drama because of Stephanie. If you don't want to be in the middle of it, you should communicate that to her. Literally all I've ever heard from her today was through you directly, so she seems very happy bringing you along. I get you don't want to be in the middle, but she's putting you there, lol. Plus, you're texting her too, so I don't know. If she reschedules, I'd believe her, but she hasn't been very honest and it's just so rude. Zach continued to ask Nick to keep him out of the drama, and Nick continued to complain about Stephanie. At the end of their messages, Zach asked Nick to keep him out of the drama again. This is also between you and her. I still consider both of you to be friends, and I don't want to be in the middle of it, especially since the Veronica drama has nothing to do with me. Again, please wait until the end of the series before forming your opinion on the situation. In the next part of the series, Stephanie Sue defends herself, Veronica Wang speaks up, and much more. Mm -hmm.